As a user, uh, it's not easy to choose because all the vendor will tell you my, uh, my DG analyzer is better than the others. So uh, I really felt honored when SEA <laughs> asked me to, to, to uh, speak about that and to, 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 to deal with this uh, group. And uh, <clears throat> we, we, uh, we have five questions that we are going to ask you all. You received the questions. I tried on each question to be more specific, but before we, we start, uh, feel free to ask for your answers if you need them. And I will ask you to present all you, yourself briefly so that we know who you are and who you represent. Thank you. Thank you. Tony McGrail, Doble Engineering. Tony Skelly, Qualitrol. <coughs> Marco Tozzi, Cameron Power. My name is Carsten Schroeder of MTE uh, Meter Test Equipment from Switzerland. So good afternoon. My name is Marcos Perez, uh, coming from General Electric from Spain. Another point. I, I read all your answers to the questions, and I really want you to stay on the technical side, if possible, not on the commercial side. Okay. Okay. So the topic one is strengths and weaknesses of the different techniques. So mainly we have two techniques, the classical one, gas chromatography, and the infrared techniques that can be divided in two techniques, photoacoustics and non-dispersive infrared gas analyzer. We also see some solid state detectors, and maybe there are other known techniques. So can each of you explain what are the pros and cons of the, the different techniques and also um, the issues that they will have to address. I, I wrote some of the issues there, the gas, uh, carrier gases crisis, helium crisis, and concerning the infrared techniques, all the interference, interferences, C2 and C3 uh, gases. Tony? <laughs> Thank you. Could you show slide one? Um, I speak as someone who has... Should go there, just a second. You have to pay the hamster more. <coughs> okay. Page down. So I speak as someone who started in the industry developing multi-gas online DGA. I've used a variety of different techniques from solid state to Fourier transform to GC and moved on to be a buyer as National Grid UK and National Grid US. I have some very strong opinions. My preference is to have laboratory grade multi-gas DGA as a user, in that when I take a sample through the system, I'm gonna make a decision, and one of those decisions is whether to send someone out to take a sample. So for me, if I do not wish to take a sample, I want the device to be excellent so that it will perform a laboratory grade measurement. If, however, I choose not to go through the diagnostic route but the detection route, I then put my asset management system together such that we will be able to de-energize the transformer if necessary. There are many reasons why Different systems have pros and cons. We talk about helium, we talk about uh, variability and interference. The example I'm showing at the top right is from a photoacoustic system. We're looking at one gas, ethane. It shows some variability in the results, and then it shows a rising trend. Problem with trends is you can choose your own trend, and there's a cartoon at the bottom. It's very well worth investigating the cartoon as they have six more different trends you could apply to the same data. If you press slide down, you see that the data itself, even though it was rising, was within the variability of, back up again please, was in the variability of the system. It's just part of the natural uh, variability of the results. We have to be very careful that when we buy a system to make a measurement, we check the accuracy not of the sensor, but of the whole system. 
In exactly the same way as when we take an oil sample, send it to a lab, we're taking oil, sending it to an instrument, a monitor. We need the accuracy not of the sensor, but of the monitor as a whole. And that includes the gas extraction, the oil circulation, the interference, etc. So in terms of problems, the laboratory grade systems do require gas, but they should be able to operate independently for at least four years. Those same systems will also provide an opportunity for replacement of the main zone within the device. And we would expect any device up front to last a minimum of 15 years before you had to change out any sensor part. So I could go on, but that would be unfair on the rest of the table. So thank you. Thank you. So I would concur with most of what Tony says. Um, I, I am uh, from Qualitrol. Qualitrol have a range of products uh, branded server on that are uh, gas chromatography based. Um, however, in, in my previous life, I worked uh, with uh, infrared based systems. So I see the benefits and weaknesses of both. Um, but I'll only talk about the benefits of gas chromatography, right? Because that's where my current role is. Um, first of all, if you if you believe in dissolved gas analysis as a scientific principle, um, then there would seem to be benefits to online dissolved gas analysis. And why does anybody do dissolved gas analysis? It is not to get PPMs of data. It's not necessarily even to get trends. It's to perform diagnosis. So you want to know what's wrong with your equipment. You don't want to know PPMs. You don't want to know um, other details from the monitor. You want to know what's wrong with your transformer. Uh, all of the diagnostic systems that are out there are the basis for most people's decision-making purposes when it comes to diagnostics. So Duval's and Rogers and the key gas method, etc. And they are all based off of analysis that was done in a laboratory using gas chromatography. Uh, the reason that gas chromatography is used in the laboratory is because you get traceable accuracy from it. And for the same reason, you might choose to use gas chromatography in the field because you can get traceable accuracy, not just the day you install it or in a month or in a year or in five years, but for the entire lifetime of the product because gas chromatography by its nature uh, must be calibrated routinely. You're always operating off a stable calibration level. So I would say from the point of view of the, the key benefit of gas chromatography, it is that you are assured of the accuracy in the field from day one until end of life of the monitor. From the point of view of the second part of that question, um, which was in relation to the helium crisis, I will uh, borrow a phrase from Donald Trump and say it's <laughs> fake news. <laughs> <coughs> So indeed, helium is a limited resource, oh. and the US federal uh, helium reserve is being used up now with a view to uh, making the, the market financially viable for helium producers. Uh, there was a, a spike in the price of helium uh, about a year ago in relation to uh, the, the temporary blockade or, or the temporary restrictions in Qatar, but there is a helium plant online in Qatar now shipping product. There's a second plant coming online in Qatar. There's a plant coming on in line in Russia. And the issue of, of gas is really, I would describe as a non-issue. It's, uh, it's something that the market will resolve and there's no reason to believe that the world is suddenly going to run out. Okay. Thank you. Mark? <coughs> yep. So um, I work for Kamlin Power. The, the name can sound pretty new, but the history behind the company is quite old because it was the former Kelman. So basically we have three persons in this table that are more or less associated with the new or old uh, stuff in Kelman. So we produce photoacoustic based systems and, and also NDIR. So let's say infrared based system without making too many differences between the two technologies. Okay. So if I have to do a comparison between photoacoustic and gas chromatography, well, one of, of the, I would say one of the advantages is basically uh, one of the disadvantages that was mentioned before about, for example, having the carrier gases, the consumables. So let's say one of the advantages is definitely 
the non-necessity for having these carrier gases and likely reduce the maintenance cost. Of course, whatever I say now, whatever we will say today is anyway deba debatable, okay? But this is at least our point of view. In terms of disadvantages of the photoacoustic, cross-contamination was mentioned. It's not a secret, okay? Between technical guys, we can talk about that. There are contaminations, you know, cross-interferences between the spectrum of different gases. The important is not give up on that, but find out a solution. So what we have done, invested in the, next, in the past six years, is to develop our own optical filters in order to be sure that we detect the right gas. A massive investment, for example, in gas chromatography mass spectrometers that allow us to uh, detect uh, the different kind of contaminants and make simulations, uh, for example, using formaldehyde, uh, tool, um, acetone, etc., etc., etc. So it has just to be managed properly. We produce NDIR-based system as well. So let's make a comparison between the photoacoustic and the NDIR. The principle is the same. Infrared-based techniques are similar. The principle is the same. It's a so absorption from the molecules of our energy, from the light, which causes something. Which something is a thermal expansion, okay? You can measure the loss of the power. This is the NDIR transmission-based techniques. Or you can measure the vibration with microphones. This is the NDIR photoacoustic system. Both systems are NDIR, okay? Advantages. Photoacoustic has better uh, sensitivity, lower detection limit, no question about. Disadvantages. Photoacoustic is more expensive. So NDIR-based techniques, and that's why we have a five-gas NDIR-based technique, is more cost-affordable uh, compared to the photoacoustic. But, of course, the sensitivity is better with the photoacoustic compared to the NDIR. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So um, basically, I've learned that, or for the last uh, three speakers, we were talking mainly about um, multi-gas, online DGA, one of the questions of, um, of, of our convener of the group was also about solid state or more simple online DGA equipment. Basically, when MTE started to develop online DGA equipment close to 20 years ago, we were actually starting with a combination out of membrane um, gas extraction in combination with uh, electronic sensors for hydrogen and carbon monoxide, mainly because we did not want to provide only information on electrical failures, but also information on failures, aging, heating of the um, overheating of the cellulosic isolation. So um, this is what we see as a major advantage of a membrane and um, electronic sensor combination over solid state sensors where we believe that there is still long-term experience is missing. Now, when we address multi-gas online DGA, maybe if we can put up the, oh, well, that's already there. Um, concerning multi-gas online DGA, we decided for a combination out of headspace gas extraction, which you see on the bottom of our extraction system in combination with uh, NIR or NDIR um, technology, mainly because this does not require any moving parts. So if you see the upper um, NIR optical infrared measurement system, you do not see any optical, any mechanical parts. And we believe that on a transformer, this is, uh, is very important because we are, here we work in a very, very harsh environment we have to deal with noise, we have to deal with vibrations, and uh, all the advantages over um, gas chromatography have already been, been mentioned, so I don't want to underline that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so my Marco. name is Marcos, uh, I work for G. So the good thing about being the last one is that uh, most of the topics has been already addressed. So especially since we have some photoacoustic already on the table. So in G, we had uh, we use uh, as a matter of fact two different techniques. So we have a fuel sensor for what we call single gas analyzers, and we use the membrane as a gas extraction method, and we also use photoacoustics uh, for multi-gas analyzers. 
So these trends, as Marco mentioned before, is that uh, we don't require consumables. Uh, it's been a proven technology. Well, this is, sorry, I was not following the slide. So this is our single uh, gas analyzers. Uh, if you move the presentation, okay, that's the single fuel sensor uh, technology that we use. And uh, it also has some advantage uh, not having the moving parts, as uh, Karsten mentioned before. And we approach this uh, as a, some, some kind of a smoke alarm to detect failures. Moving for the multigas, which is maybe the, the main topic here, we use the photoacoustics. Uh, the main advantage that had been already said, uh, apart from the very repeatable technology and very accurate, but uh, we don't require consumables, not only for the helium crisis, but also for the logistic and EHS implications of uh, having that carry bottle. But mainly, I mean, the disadvantage, as uh, been said already, is that we have uh, this uh, cross-contamination or C2 or C3 interference. Uh, luckily, we have a very large install base, so we had uh, some experience on that. The reality is that uh, even though we found those uh, issues on the field, there are not so many, at least from our experience. And in some cases uh, that we found those, we are able to work with our customers really to, to really toggle those, uh, those issues. And even at some points, we have been able even to discover, for example, some traces of SF6 uh, on, on that particular one that was uh, one of the, let's say, advantages because the customer was not aware that they, they had a leakage on the substation. So, even uh, with uh, some of the disadvantages, we're able to, to try to find, the, let's say, the positive way uh, or the positive thing on, on that. 